Hi everyone. Uh, so now in this lecture, we will be focusing on finding zeros of simple impedance networks. So we discussed the motivation behind this, and we also said that these can these results that we have derived so far, uh, it's very very simple. Uh, if you have already done it, uh, here we are giving a more a formal way of finding the poles and zero, uh, poles and zeros for impedance networks. Okay. So this part of the lecture will be mainly focused on the zeros of ZFS. Uh, in, again, in the next lecture, I'll uh, start writing transfer functions by inspection for impedances. So the most common result we'll be using in this lecture is what we have shown here. That is, if you connect two impedances in series, okay, we connect two impedance in series, z and minus z, then the equivalent of it will be like a short circuit. So the both of them are going to behave like a short circuit. Okay, so uh, that's like if you apply a current source, a finite current source, then the voltage developed across the current source will be zero. Okay, any positive voltage developed across Z naught, across Z will be equal to the negative of voltage across minus Z. So the sum of the two voltages will be zero. So this impedances, this condition of impedances cancelling out each other and behaving like a short circuit. So if you connect the two in parallel, the impedances cancel out each other and behave like an open circuit. If you connect them in series, Z and minus Z in series, they cancel out each other and behave like a short circuit. Okay. So and this condition usually happens only for one value of S. And that value of S, uh, obviously we are going to call it as a zero because the impedance itself becomes zero at that value of S. So we'll start with the simplest uh, impedance, which is two, two impedances Z1 and Z2 connected in parallel. Now, how do you find zero for this? So uh, zero is a condition when the impedance has to literally has to go to zero. And that will happen if either one of the impedances goes to zero. If either Z1 or Z2 goes to zero at any value of S, then we can say the overall impedance is also zero. So when two elements are in parallel, the lowest impedance will dictate the overall impedance. Okay, so if you recall for a pole, uh, we said that both of them had to go to infinity or it has to it had to meet a different condition which was z equal to z1 equal to minus z2 but for zero the condition that has to be met when you have two impedances in parallel is either one of them going to zero either one of them going to zero at two different values of s okay or it can happen at a single value as well so then the system is said to have one zero at that value of s The second impedance is what when we connect two impedances in series, Z1 and Z2 in series. So then the obvious condition is since both of them are in series, so we just have to meet this condition. They both, the sum of the two impedances should be equal to zero at the value of S equal to SZ. So then that SZ will be the zero of this impedance. So the condition can be written as Z1 equal to minus Z2 or we can also write it in terms of admittance as Y1 equal to minus Y2. Okay, so we'll use either these conditions, whichever is easier. Sometimes, if you have a parallel, I mean, parallel uh, components, uh, con components connected in parallel, then using admittance condition will be easier. So that's why I've written both the conditions here. So the value of S that satisfies this condition, y1 equal to y2 or z1 equal to minus z2, okay, or y1 equal to minus y2, will be the zero of the circuit. Or both of them, both the impedances Z1 and Z2 can go to zero simultaneously. They have to go, I mean, for you to have a zero, both has to be zero. If they go to zero at a single value of S, yes, we can call that also as zero of the system. So we'll be using two conditions. One is Z1 equal to minus Z2. The other condition is both becoming equal to zero for finding impedance in a series uh, impedance connection like this shown here. The third one is again a two branch circuit. So wherein we have two uh, impedances, two branches of impedances connected in parallel. So if you are supposed, if you are supposed to find the zeros for this, we'll apply the same condition that we applied for a, a parallel uh, impedances. So that is either one of the branch going to zero. So Z1 plus Z2 can go to zero or Z3 can go to zero. Either one of them going to zero would imply that the overall impedance is also zero. The first condition Z1 plus Z2 equals 0 translates to Z1 equals minus Z2. Okay, it's a combination of what we discussed in the first two cases. 
Okay. The third case obviously is when all the three going to zero simultaneously at a single value of s. Yes, that will also be then s equal to s z where all three go to zero. You can use that condition also if if a circuit satisfies that condition at some value of s, that will also be a zero for the circuit. Okay, so using these circuits, we'll uh, solve a set of uh, the, the similar set of problems which we discussed for finding poles. So here we are supposed to find the zero of the circuit. You have R and C in series, so I can directly apply the condition R equals minus one by S C. So this is Z one equal to minus Z two condition. Okay, and from that we get the zero. This is a left off plane zero at minus one by R C. Then this circuit, which is R and C in parallel. So when two elements are in parallel, we have to find are there any conditions in which either of them go to zero. The first one is a resistor. The first element is a resistor that never goes to zero at any point. So the condition is ruled out. The other condition is the second impedance going to zero. Okay, the second impedance can go to zero at s equal to infinity. So this circuit has a zero at infinity. Okay, so there is no finite zero. So the zero for this circuit is is at s equal to infinity. Now, if I take a circuit like this R and L together, again we will apply the same condition Z1 equal to zero or Z2 equal to zero condition. Z1, which is R1, will never go to zero at any value of s, so we'll rule out that condition. The other condition is the second element, that is inductor going to zero, inductor impedance going to zero, so that is S L1 equal to zero, so that happens at S equal to zero. Okay, inductor behaves like a short circuit at DC, so this circuit should have a zero at DC. So then, third condition, third circuit is uh, what we. I mean, the other circuit is that we have an L and C in parallel. So again, in this circuit, we are supposed to find zeros. So we'll similarly equate the individual branches to zero and see what are the values of S which satisfies that condition. So first, S L equal to zero. That gives us a zero at zero. S is zero. Okay. So we have a zero at S equal to zero. The second. Condition is equating the capacitive impedance to zero. That is one by S C equal to zero. That will happen at infinity. Okay. So capacitive impedance goes to zero only at infinity. So you have a two zeros here. At one at it zero, and the other zero is at infinity. So this we will discard because we'll only take uh, the finite zeros at finite uh, values into account. We'll ignore this. So in this circuit. Which is which has a resistor R and C in parallel and a capacitor in series with it. So again, to find zero for this, uh, the only condition which this circuit, I mean, uh, there are two conditions under which this circuit will exhibit a zero. One is Z1 equal to minus Z2. It's a, uh, it, you have connected two impedances in series, or so in this case, I've used Y1 equal to minus Y2 because you have a parallel RC. It's easier to write impedances, uh, admittances for parallel circuits. So the admittance of Y1 here is SC1 plus 1 by R. That we are going to equate it to SC2, and from that we get a zero as 1 by R into C1 plus C2. Okay, so that will be the uh, zero for the circuit. And the other condition is that we discussed when both the impedances can they go to zero simultaneously at a single value of S. So in this circuit, you can see that. The first impedance is dominated by a resistor and a capacitor. The second impedance is purely a capacitor. Okay. The first impedance is a combination of R and C. Now the second capacitor, it can go to zero only at S equal to infinity. So one by S C two will be zero at S equal to infinity. And if you see the first impedance, it's a parallel R C circuit. So at very high frequencies, the capacitive impedance is going to be lower, so that will dominate. And at S equal to infinity, even the capacitive impedance is going to blow up to zero. So this condition is satisfied. Z1 equal to Z2 equal Z2 equal to zero happens at S equal to infinity. So we can say this circuit has two zeros: one at minus a left off plane zero at minus one by R into C1 plus C2, and a pole, uh, sorry, and another zero at infinity. So since it's in zero at infinity, we will discard this. This won't figure in the transfer function. Only the finite zeros and finite poles will figure in the transfer function. Okay, so this we can say which has one finite zero. 
Now, in this circuit here, what we have shown here, so similarly, the, it's, it's a circuit with two impedances in series. So you can use the condition y1 equal to minus y2. Again, I've used y because you have one parallel RC circuit. It's easier to write this condition than z1 equal to minus z2. Okay. So uh, using that condition, uh, we can directly derive the zero. So I'm just going to equate 1 by R2 to be minus of 1 by R1 plus SC. From that, you get the zero as minus 1 by R1 parallel R2 into C. But R1 parallel R2 here is R1 R2 by R1 plus R2. Okay. So uh, one thing I'll just very briefly mention, this happens to be the short circuit time constant for the circuit, but I'm not introducing all those terms. So we'll stick to one procedure. So this is more like a very a systematic or a logical procedure of finding uh, zeros and poles for impedances. Now the next circuit is here. So for this circuit to find the zero, I'll again use this condition Z1 equal to minus Z2. So then here you can see that it's very easy to use y1 equal to minus y2 because the both are parallel impedances. So from that I get this condition. 1 by r1 plus sc1 will be equal to minus of 1 by r2 plus sc2. From that you get the 0 as r1 parallel r2 into c1 plus c2. Okay. And similarly we can use this condition as well. Is there any other condition when either z1 or z2 goes to uh, 0. We can see that and it, it turns out at infinity, at s equal to infinity, this impedance will become 0 and this will also become 0. So we can use that condition as well, both of them going to 0 at a single value of s and that happens to be at infinity. Okay, so we have two zeros, one left off plane real 0 and a 0 to infinity. So again, we'll consider only one and discard the 0 to infinity. Now in this circuit, again, we are supposed to find the zeros of this circuit. So this circuit has two branches, uh, okay, this branch and the branch here. So again, when we have two branches, we can use the condition either one of them going to zero. So the first branch is a capacitor 1 by SC2, the impedance is 1 by SC2, that goes to zero at infinity, okay. And if you look at the second branch, that goes to zero when R equals minus 1 by SC1. So from that you get a condition which is SZ is minus of 1 by RC1. Okay, so you have one real zero and one uh, real zero, left off plane real zero and one infinite zero. So we'll discard that and we can say this circuit has one zero, one finite zero. So you can extend the same thing if let's say we have uh, two branches like this. So this is R1, C1, R2, C2. So then we can say that this circuit will actually have two zeros. So when uh, the, for this impedance to go to zero, you need to satisfy this condition. And for this branch to go to zero, you have to satisfy this condition R1 equals minus one by SC1, or you get SZ2 as minus one by R1C1, and another zero at SZ1 at minus one by R2C2, okay? So this way we can actually find circuits, find uh, poles and zeros for for some simple impedance networks. Okay, so in the next lecture, we'll see how to write transfer functions with the knowledge of poles and zeros. It's a very, very simple thing, but for the sake of completeness, I'm discussing all these things.